When we talk about gameplay polish, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. No game in the history of games has been perfect. So just get your game to the point where it's a fun experience. And who knows, maybe that small detail that you just let be part of your game could be the thing your players love the most about it. Hello gamers, I'm Justice, I'm an independent developer, and today we're going to polish up the gameplay in Old Town Racing Club. This is where I ask for a like and a subscribe. Let's get into it. The first thing that I wanted to add was a way for the player to turn on and off the music. If we go to the background music game object, we can see that I've added an object variable simply called music on. It's a Boolean. It just, check, just checks a box. That's all it does. There's no flow graph attached to this game object. This is actually all handled in the pause menu. We'll go ahead and activate the pause menu and I'll kind of show you some updates I've made here. Uh, first, I've put the order around the pause menu. And I made all the buttons look like buttons. I think I covered that in my last video. But there is a turn music button now. So if we expand on our menu, we can see the turn music on off button, which lives right here. And so this has a little flow graph attached to it. we will cover what this is doing. Um, but what it's basically gonna do is on the update, it's going to check and see if the music is on. So it's gonna grab the object variable from the music game object and plug that into a branch and say, okay, if the music is on, then I'm gonna set the text of the button to say music off or music on, depending on what tree from that branch it falls off of. And then on button click, so when the user clicks on the music on off button, it's gonna run that into a branch also and check and see, again, if that music is on or off from that game object. And it's either going to play or stop the music. So it's gonna turn the music all the way off turn the music all the way on and then it's going to set that music on variable to either on or off real simple so if the music is on it turns it off if the music is off it turns it on something to note about the way that setup is is that it's going to completely turn that track off and then start over from the beginning something else i've done in the race manager is that in this flow graph is getting pretty big and, and gnarly here um when the player hits tab or that pause menu key we're actually going to pause or unpause the music. So depending on the state of the pause menu, right? So if the pause menu is exposed or is active, then we will pause the music or unpause the music based on whatever tree off that branch it falls. And I just added these pause and unpause units. It's real simple. You just pause the music or unpause the music. That's what stops the music at its current position and then, and then plays it again at its current position. So uh, we'll walk you through a little bit of a sample of what we're seeing here in both the pause menu and the music on off option. You're also going to notice that I added some, uh, some movement to the clouds. I don't know if I like how that works just yet, but you will see it in the game when I play this real quick. So you can see the clouds are moving and the game started, the music has started, and if I hit the, the pause button, the game stops, the music comes down, the, the car engines are still there, which I don't mind so much. And if I turn the music off, it's gonna set that variable to turn the music off. When I hit tab again, the music is gonna stay off, right? So that's kind of how the design of the game here. So if I pause it, the user, the player, knows that it's paused because the music has gone off and turn the music back on, which, um, yeah, I think I like that. So the button is going to indicate that that the click will do the thing. Um, we can unpause it and see that the music is coming right back on. The other thing I was able to do this past week was get the wheels to all turn for each of the car models. So right now we've got the Porsche body is active. So we'll go ahead and play through this. Now I've got to switch it over to scene view and find the car. Ah, we're close enough. So we'll find the car in the scene view. And if I just go back to the game view and just back up just a little bit, you can see the wheels are actually spinning along with the car. That wasn't always the case. Um, but I felt like it was important to get that working. So that way I just kind of for completeness, right? I wanted to know that these wheels would spin and it works like that for every car. Now, if you want to know more details about how I did that, let me know in the comments and I'll cover that. That's probably another video. Uh, it does get kind of complicated with the way wheel colliders are set and I have to rotate the wheels sometimes to get the rim on the outside but the wheel still pointing forward. It gets kind of tricky. But I was able to make all of the wheels spin for all of the car bodies. I'm very happy about that. I mentioned this a little earlier was the skybox. 
So let's take a look. I think I put that in the camera for the car because I wanted to keep it in the same position. This is all it takes to get the skybox to rotate right here. This one node is a material set float for rotation. So this is gonna set the rotation of that material on what, uh, what material though is gonna be the skybox. So this is real simple. You just add a unit for render settings. And see this little arrow in the fuzzy finder? If you click on it, it's gonna to wanna to know which one. And if you just hit a dot sky, it's gonna pick up the skybox. So we're gonna get the skybox. That's all I did to get this unit right here. And then it's going to take whatever is in the skybox. And I, I gave the object, I gave this a variable, which is an object variable for rotate speed. So I can set this without having to dive into the flow graph every time. And then you multiply this variable by time.time, .time, not time.delta time. That didn't work. It's gotta be time.time. .time. I'm not sure why. Um, I don't know. Uh, normally it's it's delta time you want to use, but in this case it wasn't and it worked beautifully. You plug that into the value and that rotates the skybox. Now the other part about that is this variable. So down here we can see that it's 0.05. Um, I, can, I can change this, I can set it at runtime, uh, and you can see if we go back into the game view, I'll have to leave this window open, uh, but you can see the rotation here and this is on the update. So I can change this to like 0.01. And we can just see that the skybox rotates very slowly. I can make it a two and make it a really, really rainy day. Now it does. It rotates. It doesn't like slide over the, over like the the sky plane. So I want it to be very, very subtle. Maybe like 0 0.4, 0 0.2, maybe like 0.2. I don't want it to move very much at all. Just enough to know that it's there, and kind of gives the world some life. That's all I'm looking for. And one of the last things I did was the end screen. So let me get to the point where I finish a race and I'll show you what the end screen looks like. You might also notice some sparks when I hit things, uh, covering that in the next video, how I got those sparks to spawn on collision at the point of impact. So if you look, they, they spawn in the front or the back or the side, wherever the collision actually happened, that's where it spawns that particle emitter. I'm just trying to finish the race. I'm not trying to get first or anything like that. So before, when I finished the race, the game would just stop. So now I've changed it to a different layout here where the game keeps going, the camera stays, the car, I can actually drive the car still, which is kind of neat. There is a an indicator of what position I'm in, which I've got to fix the way that updates. Um, collected extra money, total bonus, there's a bit of an error right here. You can see where the word in is interfering with the word you. I might do something different with the way this layout is though, but I wanted to show uh, at least this trick and what I was able to do and what I might do next to overcome some of those challenges. So if we take a look, so all this is done in the race manager. When we finish a race, I'll make this full screen. So we're off this top branch here. So I do have to go back just a little bit because I want the camera to trigger first. So what I've done was I said, okay, take the camera and parent it to an object called race end camera and stay in the world position, right? So it's, I, I positioned, I made a new object and I positioned it wherever I thought it should go. And then I parented the camera to that object so that way it stays. Now I might use Cinemachine in a few weeks to make that a little bit better. And then of course it turns on the end screen and turns off all this other stuff. And then I have done something with the music where if the music is on, uh, it turns off the music and plays like a little victory sound. I don't love this victory sound just yet, but I'll, I'll work on that a little bit more. But that's the, the basic idea. I'm not going to change the flow graph at all. I'm just going to change the sound effect to something that I like a little bit better. The race end camera is parented to the end zone. So that way, when it reparents, I don't have to worry about what, uh, where it is by location. I can take this end zone or the whole race manager and put it on a new track, and it's going to have that position. Um, now again, I might make this a virtual camera and cinema machine here real soon, but for now, it does what I want it to do in terms of moving the camera to uh, like a steady position, and then the race sort of just ends on its own naturally, and the player can kind of mess around for a minute. I do have to lock in those the, the position. I don't know if you noticed that, but the position marker changed. And that's pretty much it for what I've been working on this week. In the next video, I will cover that spark emitter that I made based on the collision. Uh, and do let me know if you want to see those wheel colliders. Thank you so much for watching. And here's another video where I added some polish to a game that still ended up turning out the way I wanted to, but I didn't have to add so much in the polish face. It's a small game, but still, it's still got there. And if you like my content so far, consider subscribing.